Hey guys and welcome to Hot Gastro. So in today's video we'll be discussing what is a magnesium blood test. So let's get started. So before we get into the specifics of the magnesium blood test itself, let's talk a little bit about what you can expect when your doctor orders this blood test for you. So a magnesium blood test is a simple test that can be done at your closest laboratory or hospital. No special preparation is needed for a magnesium blood test, which means you don't have to fast so you can eat and drink as usual before the test. So during the test, a blood sample will be collected from you, which means a needle will be inserted into a vein, usually in your arm, to draw out some blood into a gold top or SST blood tube. This blood tube is then sent off to the laboratory where it is analysed and resulted. So what is magnesium? So magnesium is an essential mineral that acts as an electrolyte in the body. So electrolytes are substances that conduct electrical impulses when dissolved in the blood and they are crucial for maintaining the balance of fluids in the body, nerve signalling, muscle contractions, and overall cellular function. So magnesium plays several important roles in the body, and they include, number one, muscle function. So magnesium helps to regulate muscle contractions and relaxation. It competes with calcium, which promotes muscle contraction, thereby helping to prevent muscle cramping or over-contraction. It is also important for number two, nerve signaling. So magnesium helps to regulate the neurotransmitter release and nerve impulses, maintaining proper communication between nerves and muscles. The third function of magnesium is to maintain the heart rhythm. So magnesium is also important for maintaining a steady heart rhythm and preventing arrhythmias, which are irregular heartbeats. At number four, magnesium is also important for energy production. So magnesium plays a key role in energy production by activating enzymes involved in ATP or adenosine triphosphate production, which is the main source of energy for the cells in our body. The fifth function of magnesium is in the regulation of the blood pressure. So by helping to relax blood vessels, Magnesium plays a part in maintaining healthy blood pressure levels in the body. And finally, at number six, we have the bone formation function. So magnesium is also involved in the process of bone formation, as it helps to regulate bone mineralization, which is essential for maintaining strong and dense bones. So now that we know what magnesium is all about, let's take a closer look at what the magnesium blood test is all about. So the magnesium blood test is a diagnostic test that measures the level of magnesium in your blood. As mentioned in the previous slide, magnesium is an essential mineral involved in many bodily functions, including muscle and nerve function, bone strength, and regulating blood pressure. This test helps to assess whether an individual's magnesium levels are within the normal range or if they have a deficiency, which is known as hypomagnesemia, or an excess, which is known as hypermagnesemia, of magnesium in the blood. So what are the normal ranges of magnesium in the blood? So the normal range for magnesium in the blood is typically between 1.3 to 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. So that normal range again is 1.3 to 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. So in cases of low magnesium in the blood, which is a process known as hypomagnesemia, the magnesium levels will fall below 1.3 milliequivalents per liter. And in cases of higher than normal magnesium in the blood, which is known as hypermagnesemia, the magnesium levels will fall above 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. So now that we know what the normal range looks like and the abnormal ranges, let's take a closer look at what are the causes for abnormal magnesium levels in the blood.
So first we'll explore abnormally low magnesium levels. So abnormally low magnesium levels is known as hypomagnesemia and can have a range of effects on the body and are often associated with various health conditions. So here are a few causes for hypomagnesemia. At number one, we have inadequate dietary intake. So this occurs in poor nutrition or malnutrition cases or in cases of chronic alcoholism. At number two, we can have gastrointestinal disorders. So this includes malabsorption syndromes like Crohn's disease or celiac disease, which will prevent the proper absorption of magnesium from the diet. We can also have chronic diarrhea or vomiting, which can cause losses through these bodily fluids of magnesium. And then we can also have cases of bowel resections or bypass surgery that also prevents the proper absorption of magnesium, leading to lower levels in the blood. At number three, we have kidney diseases. So increased magnesium loss through kidney diseases are often seen in diuretic use, such as the use of thiazide diuretics or loop diuretics in renal tubular disorders, and in the use of certain medications like proton pump inhibitors, cisplatine or cyclosporine. At number four, we have endocrine disorders. So here we have uncontrolled diabetes, which can account for significant urinary loss of magnesium due to osmotic diuresis. And we can have hyperparathyroidism, that will also contribute to low magnesium levels. And at number five, we have some other causes, which include severe burns, pancreatitis, prolonged use of nasogastric suctioning, alcoholism, and chronic stress that can all lead to abnormally low levels of magnesium in the blood. So moving along, let's discuss abnormally high magnesium blood levels. So abnormally high levels of magnesium is known as hypermagnesemia and can occur when the concentration of magnesium in the blood becomes elevated, typically above 2.1 milliequivalents per liter. So while this is rare, hypermagnesemia can be serious and often arises in individuals with impaired kidney function. So here are a few causes. So at number one, we have kidney dysfunction, which includes chronic kidney disease or acute kidney injury. So both chronic kidney disease and acute kidney injury can impair the kidney's ability to excrete magnesium properly, leading to its accumulation in the body, thereby raising the magnesium blood levels. At number two, we have excessive magnesium intake. So the overuse of magnesium-containing medications, such as antacids or laxatives, especially in individuals with kidney issues, can contribute to high magnesium levels. We can also have intravenous magnesium therapy, for example, in pregnant women with preeclampsia or eclampsia, that can also raise the magnesium levels. And we can also have individuals who take magnesium supplements in excessive amounts. So this will also contribute to a high blood magnesium level. At number three, we have endocrine disorders, and this includes hypothyroidism and adrenal insufficiency. So hypothyroidism can also sometimes lead to elevated magnesium blood levels. And adrenal insufficiency, such as in cases of Addison's disease, will also cause high magnesium levels in the blood. And finally, at number four, we have other causes, which includes dehydration, lithium therapy, and tissue damage. So in cases of dehydration, the magnesium levels will appear higher as magnesium will concentrate in the blood. In cases of lithium therapy, the lithium therapy itself can impair the magnesium excretion by the kidneys, leading to higher blood magnesium levels. And in cases of large tissue damage, such as in cases of trauma or burns or severe infections, like diseases like rhabdomyolysis, this will cause magnesium to be released in large amounts into the bloodstream, 
causing abnormally high magnesium levels to show up on a blood report. So as we have just seen, magnesium is crucial for various physiological functions in the body and abnormal levels can lead to significant health issues. A magnesium blood test helps to assess your magnesium status, allowing for early detection of imbalances and the management of conditions that may cause or result from abnormal levels. This test is particularly important for individuals with risk factors such as kidney disease, gastrointestinal disorders, or those taking certain medications. And that brings us to the end of this video. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found the presentation very interesting and informative. Please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with anyone you think may find this video useful. So if you want to encourage me to do even more, or to say thanks for all the free information you've received on my channel today, you can say thank you by buying me a coffee. So the link to buy me a coffee can be found in the description box below. Take care and have an awesome day further. Bye for now.